Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Paris, coming to you from Baltimore. With the statute of limitations coming due, Swedish prosecutors have dropped their investigation into the sexual assault allegations against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange because they could not interview him, they said, which is a prerequisite in Swedish law for charging a suspect. Assange said he was extremely disappointed that he, the Swedish prosecutors avoided hearing his side of the story. The rape allegations against Assange, however, still stand until 2020. Assange has been staying in the Ecuador's London embassy since 2012 to avoid being extradited to Sweden and possibly the United States under espionage charges. Joining me now to explain the drop charges and more is Kari Schenkman. He's an attorney representing Julian Assange with Michael Ratner and the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York. Kari, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sharmini. Pleasure to be here. So, Kerry, give us a sense of uh, what exactly happened. Was this a matter of statute of limitations, or did they really not have a case they could pursue? Well, it's absolutely both, Sharmini. What happened today is that after five years of doing nothing in Julian Assange's case, Swedish prosecutors finally today dropped most of the allegations against him. And I'll stress that those are merely allegations. Assange has not been charged with any crimes in Sweden. So that means that for the five, almost five years that Assange has been detained in various forms by Sweden in the United Kingdom, uh, Assange hasn't been charged with any crime. And this is unacceptable in terms of the effect that it's had on his health, on his family life, and on his reputation. And uh, what's next? Uh, first, will, will he now be able to leave the embassy? So today's development does not mean that Assange can leave the embassy. The, ne the next step is, is that the whole case in Sweden needs to go, go away once and for all. Uh, it's completely outrageous at this point uh, because the Swedish courts have already said that this is a close case. Uh, nearly nine months ago, the Swedish Court of Appeals criticized the prosecutor for failing to move the case forward. In May, the Supreme Court, in a split decision, uh, urge the prosecutor to advance the case. And here we are months later, and the prosecutor has still not come to London to question uh, Assange. This is absolutely unacceptable, because back then, months ago, there were four allegations. Now there's just one. It's a very different case now. The prosecutor has really shown, uh, in light of the urging of Ecuador, the United Kingdom, the Swedish courts, Assange, and our whole legal team, despite the urging by so many parties to come to London uh, that the prosecutor doesn't, isn't going to do it. I know you don't want to speculate here, but why is it that uh, she doesn't want to come to the embassy to, to question him? Well, Assange has been asking for years for the prosecutor to come to London. And I, one, one thing that I, I will shift focus on is what's been happening in the meantime during this uh, whole investigation in Sweden, which has been a massive and unprecedented national security case in the United States against Assange. Now, when we talk about the asylum that Assange enjoys in London, we're not talking about asylum from Sweden. We're talking about asylum from the United States. And Ecuador found that Assange has a well-founded fear of persecution should he ever risk extradition to the United States. Uh, the United States confirmed in March, so U.S. federal court confirmed in March that there is a ongoing, active and ongoing national security case against Assange. And just this past year, over 50 free speech groups criticized the U.S. Justice Department for continuing this investigation because of the effects that it could have for free, uh, freedom of the press and the news gathering process. Just yesterday, we had a major development that Chelsea Manning, the alleged WikiLeaks source, was threatened with indefinite solitary confinement. Now, Manning is currently serving a 35-year sentence after being court-martialed um, for uh, allegedly disclosing documents to, to WikiLeaks. And just yesterday, we learned that the Army actually wants to charge her for, and you, you, you won't believe it, but for having expired toothpaste, for asking to see a lawyer, 
and for having the copy of Vanity Fair with Caitlyn Jenner on the cover. For these trivial things, she's threatened with indefinite solitary confinement, which the United Nations and an international consensus agree is a form of torture. So Assange has absolutely every right to fear extradition to the United States, where he will seriously risk similar, likely worse treatment. Carrie Shankman uh, from the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York, I thank you for joining us today, and we will be following these cases, and I hope you join us in the future. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.